Hello everybody and welcome to this very special edition of The Other 99. Today we're going to mix things up a little bit and I'm going to introduce you guys to a couple of my friends, Adam Lopez hey. and Brian Manriquez. Hi. We're going to be looking at the final deck in the Commander Review Series, Counterpunch. We're also going to wrap things up a little bit by looking at the Commander product as a whole and the impact that it's had on the format up to this point. So, Gave is the primary general for Counterpunch, and uh, he seems pretty cool, but uh, Brian, since you did a lot of the playtesting for the deck, what is up with Gave? He's awesome. He has the potential for a lot of combo shenanigans, especially with anything with doubling season and Ashnod's altar. He's also really good because he gets terrifyingly huge, and anytime someone sticks Sigil Commander, you're going to lose... Or Sigil Captain, I'm sorry. Anytime someone sticks Sigil Captain, you're probably going to lose the game. And then Carador, he's the other uh, new general for the deck, and does some awesome stuff with the Graveyard. Adam loves Graveyard combos with his Aiden Oaken Shield deck, so why why do we love Carador, Adam? Carador can easily be a small investment for a powerful beater that just has the potential for strong combos. A Rebel Arc in the graveyard with Carador out is just one of the best things ever because you can evoke every turn and still get to do other stuff. He's just got a lot of potential to be very broken. I agree. And then finally, for our Planner Chaos Bling Dragon, we have Teneb. And like the other dragons, he's a good old 6 6 flyer, which is awesome. But he, his ability is even cooler. What is up with that ability? Why, why do we love abilities like that? Well, you get the early ramp that green gives you, and then white and black have a combination of the best spot removal in the game. So you can kill the guys that you want to steal and take them fairly easily. You don't have to give a lot of investment. You can take things from your own graveyard, too. So when you pull out your survival of the fittest and you survival your Terastodon to get something, you can connect and get your Terastodon back for three mana. Surviving him makes it four mana. You just you yeah. have a lot of ability to get value out of it. And finally, the two-color general for the deck is Vish Call. Thoughts on this guy? Combolicious. Rebel Arc, Karmic Guide, infinitely large Vish Call if you add any Enter the Battlefield creature into that, then you're golden. The only thing I don't like about him is that he costs 7, but the fact that he has lifelink to go with getting huge kind of makes up for that. And if I remember correctly, you do have to remove all of his plus 1 punch 1 counters. Yeah, that ability. part isn't yeah. so fun. That's the only thing I don't like about him. But he's, he seems like a really swingy general that can come in and completely just change the crap. Oh, easily. Yeah, so those, those kind of generals are always the most fun. So, but I'm going to go ahead and flash the original deck list across the screen. Um, but the actual 99, I think well, the three of us kind of all agree that it needs some definite uh, improvements in order for it to be able to play at the table with the rest of the commander decks that we reviewed. So, what are we looking at pulling here? Right off the bat, I'm seeing Cut, Aquastrand Spider, Deadly Recluse. They're both small creatures that don't do enough. I'd say Cut Monk Realist, at least because you can get a 2-2 two -two for 2 that does the same thing. I think Golgari Guildmage is good, but his, his ability is a little expensive. Having to pay five to do either one isn't too good. I'd say Nantuko Husk, Fertilid, Vampire Nighthawk. He's a great beater in other formats, but in this one he just falls short. I'd cut Squallmonger because I don't like having something that gives other people that much advantage. I'd say Penumbra Spider, Dark Hatchling because he's way too expensive for what he does. I'd cut Celestial Force because gaining life at seven isn't very good. All right, Adam, you take over the rest of it. What would you cut? I would definitely say cut Fists of Ironwood. I mean, it's just one of those enchantments that gives you two sapperlings, and it's not really a big deal. All of the vows can easily be cut because there's better spot removal in black, white, green. Nemesis Trap and Cobra Trap definitely need to go. <laughs> if I remember the Nemesis Trap correctly, if you cast it on your on their turn, you don't even get to swing with it. No, you don't. I would also cut Alliance of Arms because I'm not a big fan of joined forces, especially not in cards that give other people tokens when you're well, trying to make let's, a token. Let's, let's say this, though. Brown's not a fan of any of the joined forces <laughs> cards. Not one of them, that if you like. That is a lie. <laughs> Mana Charged Dragon is awesome. Okay, okay. So she's good, she's cool with any of the... I'm okay uh, with good joined forces cards. <laughs> she's okay with joined forces cards that don't help her opponents. So a joined forces card. Yeah, one. exactly. <laughs> One. I would say cut Alliance of Arms because I like asymmetrical cards, but not when they're bad for you. Because mm -hmm. I don't want to make 50, have everyone get 15 soldiers and I don't even get to swing with mine. And, uh, <laughs> Death Mutation can probably go. It is 8 <laughs> mana to kill a creature. A non-black creature at that. And it's a sorcery. And Hex because it just says 6. Not up to 6 or 5 instead of 6. Unfortunately, it makes it very, very narrow. I, I watched a guy, when we played the pre-release with these decks... 
unable to kill a Riku and a Kalia because there are only two other creatures on the board. So he and, had to face down both of those. And he was playing this deck, which of course is based around generating tokens. So you'd think he have enough cre he'd have enough creatures, but he didn't. Yeah. So, all right, so uh, what are we looking at uh, putting in the deck? Replace those uh, cards we pulled. Like, uh, I mean, surely we want to put in some of the cheap spot removal in white, like uh, maybe Path to Exile, Swords and stuff to like Plows. that. Some of the Swords really good to spot shares is, is getting pretty cheap. I'm a big fan of Crib Swap. Putrefy is really good. And, I mean, Vindicate obviously would be good, but... Yeah, Vindicate's a little bit more expensive. Vindicate than, uh, is uh, quite spendy for just an, a commander deck if you don't have one setting around. Yeah. You know. Uh, what else are we looking at? I think if I would spring for any one card, it would be a doubling season. Because it this deck just begs to have a doubling season. I also like Ashnod's Altar. Even if you're not a big fan of combo and you don't want to generate infinite mana, Ashnod's Altar is good anyway because it can help you out in generating mana if you need to get ahead. Also, if you're playing Teneb and you steal one of their creatures, let's say you steal a Titan, you can sack it to Ashnod's Altar and steal it next turn if, you don't, if you're unable to swing with it for some reason. Maybe they put a Vow on it. Yeah. They're playing the Vows. Speaking of Sun Titan, especially if we're keeping or Titans, if we're keeping Soul Snare, Sun Titan would be really good. It goes without saying that the other two Titans probably would be worth considering as well. Without a doubt. Yeah, we like we we, we talk about a lot in this uh, this show. Primeval Titan is just awesome. I think we're all a little bit obsessed with that guy in, in uh, EDH. <laughs> it's it's hard not to be. Prime Time is just like the best Titan ever for this format. Yeah. The only one that even comes close is Sun Titan. Also, yeah. speaking of ridiculous cycles, you need an Elish Norn if you're working a deck based on token generation. Yeah. Oh yeah, give all those tokens plus two plus two. <laughs> GG. I think one of the most interesting things to do is to use tokens to generate card advantage. I mean, Skull Clamp obviously comes to mind. It's already in this deck. It's very good. But there's a lot of other stuff that you can use to generate generate card advantage, like attrition's in the deck so that you can sacrifice creatures to destroy your opponent's creatures. If you're a big fan of anything at all stacks like, then Smoke Stack would be good. Death Cloud might be worth considering. With enough tokens out, Death Cloud is a is a very irrelevant Wrath of God for you. Yeah, you just pump out more tokens. Yeah, you make so six sapperlings and you Death Cloud for six, so you sack those six and you keep your 7-7 seven, seven Gave or whatever you want to call it. Unfortunately, with Counterpunch, I think uh, we, we want to do a budget kind of uh, upgrade for the deck, but Counterpunch is definitely the deck that needs the biggest makeover as far as money goes. Without a doubt. I mean, they put Deadly Recluse in the deck. You're going to have to spend a little more money to make it good. I mean, I think, honestly, you know, for, for a lot of players, I think Gabe is an awesome general. You know, you look at him, he's just, wow, and then you see the rest of the other deck, and you're like... Oh, that's disappointing. <laughs> why, why did we get the rest of this when we have such an awesome general and then the rest of the deck does Literally not just really work with our general very much? Just buy Gave and build it from the ground up. Yeah. <laughs> you don't get that much relevant stuff. I mean, I'm so... I'm kidding. Buy these decks from your local game store. <laughs> so, uh, uh, anything else? Uh, Fauna for Shaman. The... I would say if you're going to spring for a creature, assuming you're not springing for survival of the fittest, Fauna Shaman's a pretty good thing to pick up. And Court of Calling. Yes. Don't put Green Sun Zenith in a deck until you've put Court of Calling in it, unless you're playing Mono Green. Yeah, Court of Calling definitely works, especially with all your, once again, all your uh, tokens. You know, they just... make Convoke pretty awesome. Yeah, so, all right, well, then that's that's pretty much all we have for uh, Gave. If you guys have any other suggestions that you guys, maybe you guys bought the deck or have uh, worked on building it, you're on your own, just... If you have any ideas, leave a comment in the section below and uh, just tell, tell me your thoughts about it. So, finally, uh, sad day. Uh, this is the final episode for our Commander Review series. What's cool is we'll be able to move on to other uh, subjects. But what's really cool about this is it's, for EDH players who have been playing for a few years, this is something historical. This is something that Wizards is putting money and time into this format. And so, these decks, what do you think uh, the impact that they've had on, oh, up to this point? It's only been a month, but I mean... Well, first off, anyone who's involved in producing Commander content like you are and like I am, it's given us so much to do. We might say that we're getting sick of it, but let's face it, we all love getting content to put out. So, that's been pretty awesome. The new generals have been such a breath of fresh air that the format really needed. It gave people ideas to build around. I mean, I'm sure everyone's going to get tired of seeing Zedra decks, but other than that... <laughs> yeah, he's pretty awesome. The new generals have been very welcome. Yeah, what do you think, Adam? I have to completely agree with Brian. I believe that the influx of players from these commander decks is a great thing for the format. I know, at our store, we personally gained Two or three? Two or three, which is a significant number considering there's only about eight of us that actually play. Yeah. <laughs> That's a very large game. That's yeah. almost a third pod. I, I really like the new generals as well. For a deck building fanatic like I am, I, I love the idea of having new things to build around. 
and Riku is just the coolest general also, ever. Also, he yeah. looks like David Tennant from Doctor Who. Uh, yes, he does. But, uh, yeah, so uh, so overall, Wizards, we want them to do this again next summer. Without a doubt. Uh, as Evan Irwin said, it's a money boat, and they really need to catch a ride on it. Oh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> if anything else, Wizards will want to do this for the money because it was a very big selling product, for sure. Um, but we want it just because this is just awesome. It... it Add some to our format. You know, it's not so dry all the time. Anyway, so I, I hope you guys enjoyed this final uh, episode for uh, the review series. Uh, I'm Carson Perry. This is Adam Lopez and Brian Manriquez. Uh, thanks for watching.